It was a dark church, that Good Friday, now almost 40 years ago. I stood before the congregation reading the Passion of Jesus according to St. John. And when Jesus was lifted up on the cross in the story, I began to hear sobbing. It was my oldest child. And between sobs, he whimpered, they killed Jesus. They killed Jesus. And it shook me out of my sensibilities for a moment. They killed Jesus. It's been a haunting question ever since. What is Good Friday really about? I mean, for centuries, our language has been that of John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die for us. In a sense, God sacrificed Jesus that we might have life. That's the traditional language of the church on Good Friday. And that worked when the church still understood some sense of sacrifice as the normal way of communicating with God. But in more modern times, it simply seems barbaric to think of a parent sacrificing their child for the sake of strangers. Oh, it feels good for us as strangers, but it doesn't ring well with God. What kind of a God is that? And is it a God that we can trust? In more recent times, the language of Good Friday has been much more similar to that of my child. They killed Jesus. And the portrait is of Jesus as a revolutionary, a, an enemy of the state that somehow needed to die because he was challenging the status quo. In some circles, that plays well these days. But I would like to offer a third look. To enter in from the very beginning of John's Gospel. That God takes on human form in Jesus Christ and dwells among us full of grace and truth. If we believe that is true, and personally I do, then for God to experience the fullness of humanity, for Jesus to be truly, fully human and fully divine, He had to die. For that is what marks us as human. I would go so far as to say it's what marks us as a creature, a creation. We die. Just as all things die. But to be fully human, one must experience death. And so for God to become fully human, Jesus had to die. And I would argue Jesus had to experience 
the worst kind of death. to complete the passion, to complete that experience of the darkest side of humanity from betrayal to denial to desertion to mocking pain, to ridicule, to abandonment, and finally into death. In that passion, God now has something to say to in those times when we experience the darkness of humanity, when we lay in a hospice bed in the last days of our lives. When we stand over an open grave where our friends, our loved ones will be buried to stand with a parent whose child has been senselessly killed in some school shooting or on the street. Only a God who has experienced all that Jesus experiences has a word to say to us that is authentic, that is hopeful, that is comforting. For that God knows what it is that we are experiencing. In the darkest of dark. As we move then from Good Friday, from the darkness and the death, to the celebration of Holy Saturday, which in the tradition of the church has been celebrated at an Easter vigil, whose focus is upon baptism in the tradition of the early church being that was the day in which all folks were baptized. That that act of baptism is the incorporation of us into the body of Christ. That in Christ's death and resurrection, we find new hope and new life. Even as we die to the old and rise to the new. Luther's language of baptism. It is on that night that that God who has become fully human reaches out to us and reminds us that we bear within us that Holy Spirit that God first gave to us in creation. That we, even though humanly, will die as one with Christ, we shall live. And not just in some hereafter, but that new life begins each and every day, a new opportunity to begin again, knowing that our God walks with us 
in the darkness and in the light. And as such, we come to that tomb on Easter morning. And we can boldly declare with the church throughout the ages, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And even more than that, so shall we.